Okay, hi, my name is Teresa Remes. I used to be Valkonen, so if you see some, uh, or remember me as Valkonen, I'm the same person still. <laughs> um, and today I will talk about the, our experiences uh, with very high resolution modeling in Svalbard. And this work has been done together with uh, several colleagues at Met Norway and the University Center in Svalbard. And well, as any national weather service, the mission of Met Norway is to del deliver accurate and reliable weather forecasts and to be able to safeguard life and property. And Met Norway forecasts weather for the mainland Norway and the sea areas around it. Uh, and also Norway has a large forecasting responsibility in the north. Met Area 19 uh, covers the European sector of the Arctic Ocean and the Northern Atlantic. And Norway is also responsible for uh, search and rescue in a large area in the Arctic. And support these forecasting responsibilities, we, we put up this forecasting system uh, around Arctic 2015 uh, that Ivan just talked about. Um, so I don't need to go into details with that. Um, but um, as we all know, um, weather forecasting for the Arctic is more challenging than for lower latitudes. And this figure nicely illustrates how the forecast error um, increases with increasing latitude in our forecasting systems. And there are several reasons for the lower forecast accuracy in the Arctic. Um, availability and quality of um, observations are limited in high latitudes. And use of these observations um, is challenged, for example, by snow and ice covered surfaces. Then models have large uncertainties and representation of physical processes. And weather in the Arctic is characterized by small scale processes to a larger extent uh, than at lower latitudes. And all of these aspects we have addressed in the YOP endorsed alertness project. Um, and the last point with increased uh, resolution. So today I will talk about what we have done with sub kilometer resolution modeling in Svalbard. Um, and as we know that global models and even the model system with 2.5 kilometer grid spacing that we run operationally, they are not able to capture all of the spatial variability uh, people uh, experience and also what we see in observations. So for example, the weather in the town in Longyearbyen and Svalbard can be relatively calm, but once you get out in the field, it's uh, uh, compl something completely different. And we have focused in, on Svalbard and the area around the Longyearbyen town. And this is how it looks in reality. Um, <laughs> um, it has, um, well, it has about 2,500 uh, people living there and uh, has a full functioning society, uh, including university. And for many years, we have been working together with the university center in Svalbard. <coughs> they offer bachelor, master, and doctoral level courses and field work and uh, making measurements is an essential part of the education up there. And since the beginning of our Arctic, they have used our forecast data for field work planning and for educational purposes. And after the field work or field course in 2018, um, based on their uh, experiences, we decided to test a very high resolution system uh, with 500 meter grid spacing and an increased number of vertical levels. Um, and that was our first attempt to run with such high uh, resolution for the Arctic. And st since then, we have done this every year. Um, um, and the model configuration, uh, the lengths of experiments, uh, setups, they have varied between the years, uh, even the domain. But we have decided to cover the whole Svalbard um, 
because then we can have the ocean at the boundaries and not any mountains. Um, and even though it looks, uh, these green and yellow boxes, they look quite uh, small in area, um, it is about 14 times more expensive to run than the full aromarctic uh, model domain because of the increased number of grid points and the lower or the smaller integration time step. And I will show you some examples of the results that we have gotten from these different experiments. Uh, first from the first experiments in 2018, uh, then some overall statistics of the longest experiment, which was two and a half months in 2020, and then uh, at last uh, one case from last winter, or last autumn. Um, so the area around uh, Longyearbyen is uh, characterized by the small fjord uh, and the valley, Atventalm, uh, which then has small, uh, uh, many side uh, valleys. The highest mountains reach up to one kilometer. And in this study, we used nine weather stations uh, and an important station is the station at the bottom of the valley uh, called Adventalen. Um, our operational 2.5 kilometer model does have the valley somehow in it, but not very detailed. Um, and the station heights are uh, quite different from reality. That's what the numbers are. In the 500 meter run, uh, the topography is a lot better result uh, in this area. And a typical situation uh, in this valley is that the flow channels between the mountains and the highest wind speed is uh, uh, measured at the bottom of the valley. Uh, and here's an example of uh, such situation. The 2.5 kilometer system does not effectively solve the valley and there's no wind channeling while the 500 meter run captures the channeling and this is then reflected in the temperature field and the 500 meter system resolves the spatial variability um, of the temperature wall and also compared to uh, measurements made on snowmobile across the valley. Um, in a situation with very weak winds, the 500 meter system again represents the wind um, variability better than the 2.5 kilometer system. But that's not really the case for temperature. The coldest or the lowest temperatures are measured at the valley bottom and neither of the systems properly capture the temperature inversion uh, or the spatial variability measured by snowmobiles in this case. And we have gotten similar type of uh, results from um, other experiments, also from 2020. So average evolution of um, temperature uh, at 19 stations in Svalbard show that the 500 meter run shown with blue here uh, struggles to capture the lowest temperatures even, even more than the 2.5 kilometer run um, shown here with red. Uh, and that is shown in uh, summary verification scores with bigger temperature bias. Um, also, the verification shows that the 500 meter uh, run has smaller errors for wind speed on average than the 2.5 kilometer system. Um, there is quite a lot of differences between individual stations um, in performance, and we need to do more work to really understand these differences. But on average, the wind speed is uh, improved. Okay, so then uh, I will show 
It's just the one case from last year, October, when, um, when we had a project meeting in Svalbard. Um, and we took a boat from Longyearbyen uh, to a place called Pyramiden. And we got to experience some wind on the way. <laughs> um, the colors here over the ocean show the SAR wind observations. Uh, and they show wind intensification from the big fjords and then also from the smaller fjord um, that we got to experience. Uh, and then also some downslope wind uh, at the glacier. Our operational 2.5 kilometer uh, wind forecast for the trip was quite different. Um, the wind enhancement in the, from the small fjord was missed. So after the trip, uh, our colleague Eirik um, went back to the hotel and, and ran the case with 500 meter <laughs> Uh, system um, and the 500 meter system captured the wind enhancement from the small fjord uh, and also some of the wake features that were seen in the SAR uh, observations. Okay, okay now that I'm almost done, I will <laughs> Uh, summarize uh, in total what we have learned from uh, uh, these um, exercises. First of all, we have gotten some very promising results, especially for wind. Uh, so wind speed is improved with increased resolution. And this we have also found with um, 1.25 kilometer uh, experiments. The impact on temperature is more complex. Uh, and to, tomorrow, Marvin will talk about um, uh, warm bias in stable boundary layer in Aram Arctic and using the tendency tools that uh, he uses. Um, we can hopefully in future learn more about the impacts of the very high resolution uh, modeling as well. Um, I want to emphasize the importance of observations for understanding the model performance and getting a full picture what's actually happening in the atmosphere. And for us, the collaboration with the university has been essential to get their observations uh, for comparison. Well, these runs are really expensive to run. <laughs> um, so at the moment, we are not planning to have operational runs. Uh, but it could be possible to have an, um, to build an on-demand system uh, that was um, kind of demonstrated by Eirik on our, on our project meeting. And then I want to uh, stress that the increase in mod model resolution should be done together with developments on different parts of the model system. Uh, and this is, of course, something that the whole model community is working on. Yeah, on our part, uh, we work further uh, with the high resolution modeling in Svalbard, um, at least in Enforces project that we have started. And um, we are making new 500 meter simulations uh, for this September. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the results there. And there we will also uh, have a first uh, summer case uh, done. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. So thank you, Teresa. Maybe just one quick question for Teresa. Yes, David. Uh, so, Teresa, when you have these high resolution models, very high resolution models, non hydrostatic models, and there's steep terrain, typically you have to smooth the steep terrain to maintain computational stability. Did you have to do this? I, mean, I imagine you did and what effect did it have on your results? 
Um, we had to go down to 15 to 20, 12 seconds uh, to get these runs done. And there has been in the model community some um, experiences before, so we did not have to do much uh, adaptations to, <laughs> to their experiences. Uh, but to have the ocean at the boundaries really helped because then if you have the um, steep terrain at the model boundary, then it's uh, more problematic. And that's the reason we, have, we wanted to have the full uh, island inside the domain. Yeah. So, thanks again and uh, 